evening, and welcome to worship at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church as we gather together on this holy week, as we uh, remember the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples. It was a meal that he gave to us the gift of Holy Communion. It was also at that same meal that he said, I give to you a new commandment, love one another. Commandment then is a part of the theme of the whole evening. And so long ago, uh, about 1,500 years ago, the church named this day, sometimes it's called Holy Thursday, but it's also called this odd word, Maundy Thursday, uh, because the Latin word for commandment is Maundy. And so that is why it is sometimes called Monday Thursday. Tonight is also a special night for us at Good Shepherd as we celebrate First Communion for 12 of our young people. 12 students gathered together and received instruction and learned more about this holy meal. And they, we sing a special hymn in their honor in the middle of service. They painted cups that they will use to receive their First Holy Communion and take those home as a memory of this night. They bake the bread that we will be serving for our First Communion as well. Um, and so we're excited about this night. We put it on this night because of the Last Supper being celebrated. It's been a tradition of Good Shepherd for a long time. When we commune later in the service, we will be communing the First Communion students first. We'll call them forward and we ask as relatives or godparents who might be here to come forward and receive communion alongside them. We'll be calling up a student first, like it's Dylan is going to come up first, and then his family will line up alongside him and we'll commune. Then we'll call up the next student. And again, family will line up with them. That is how we'll commune the first group of people, the 12 students and their families. And then once all the first communion kids have communed, and their families, uh, then we will usher, the ushers will usher the remaining people up to receive Holy Communion. At the end of the service, I also want to explain what we do. It's a tradition that we have, that the Christian Church has, as a part of our Holy Week tradition. We will do what's called stripping of the altar. We strip the altar, meaning we take down the adornments and the things that are up front here. It symbolizes... Uh, Jesus beginning to be stripped of his humanity uh, because as soon as he was done celebrating the Last Supper with his disciples, he went out into the garden and prayed and was arrested there then after and stripped and beaten. So that is a part of our tradition tonight. So the service ends with the stripping of the altar and then with silence. And so we leave in silence at the end of the service. Um, we have Holy Week that continues then. Tomorrow night we have Good Friday worship, again at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary. All are welcome to that. And then we also have Easter service, which is at 9 o'clock on Easter Sunday morning. All are welcome to that as well. And then following worship tonight, I want to point out that cookies and lemonade and coffee will be served uh, at, from the Fellowship and Outreach Committee to help the First Communion students and their families celebrate. So please know that you're welcome to come downstairs and enjoy uh, a little bit of refreshments and celebrate in honor of these First Communion students. Those are all the announcements. I feel like I've already preached a sermon here, so many. Uh, we continue now. Uh, I invite you to rise as we sing together opening hymn. It's in your red hymnal in front of you, hymn number 471.
away your red hymnals, but turn with me, if you will, to the front section of your hymnal, page 258. The page will be down at the bottom on the edge of the page sheet. Uh, so not hymn number, but page number 258, where together then we will confess our sins and hear the good news that God forgives us of our sins, page 258. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, your Son Jesus Christ has left us a meal. A meal of bread and wine in which we share his body and blood. May we who celebrate this meal celebrate his great love for us so that his love may shine through us. Let his love fill us up and overflow through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. This time now I invite you to get out your bulletin because one of our scripture readings tonight is a psalm and we read it together as a congregation. It's printed there in your bulletin on the inside page, Psalm 116. We'll read it responsibly. I'll read first, and then you'll repeat in the bold print verse. Psalm 116. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bounds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O oh Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. And then our Holy Gospel this evening is the story of the Last Supper. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples of Jesus said to him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover meal? Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and you'll find a man carrying a jar of water. He will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and all ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples, they went to the city, and they found everything just as Jesus had told them. And there they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening... He came with the twelve, and when they had taken their place and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who's eating here with me right now. The disciples began to be distressed, and they said to him and to one another, Surely not I. Jesus said to them, It is one of you twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. 
it would have been better for that one to never have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to them, and he said, Take, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and then he gave it to all of them, and all of them drank of it. He said to them, This is my blood, the blood of my covenant. It's poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it, new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Here ends the gospel reading. Grace to you and peace from God the Father, from our Lord, our Savior, who is Jesus the Christ. When it was time for my beloved Grandma Christofferson to move from her apartment into the nursing home, her five daughters gathered with her to prepare for that move. They helped her sort through her belongings and decide what would go and fit in her room at the nursing home. They also helped her decide what to do with the rest of her beloved possessions. She'd already pared down going from a house to the apartment, but there is much less that she needed in the nursing home. In the midst of it all, they had to decide what to do with the biggest set of furniture that my grandma had yet in the apartment. And it was a beloved, beautiful, three-piece oak bedroom set. Beautiful four-poster bed, long dresser, high dresser. And it was something, obviously, she wouldn't need at St. Mark's Nursing Home in Austin. And my mom called me later that day, and she said, shock in her voice, Mary, Grandma wants you to have the bedroom set. I was surprised because my grandma has five daughters, 17 grandchildren, and loads and loads of great-grandchildren, and I was surprised to be gifted with one of her most valuable things when I am just one of many in a large family. So the next week I went to visit my grandma in Austin and I thanked her for that gift she'd given me, that beautiful bedroom set. And grandma said to me, I want you to have it, Mary. I want you to have something to remember me by. I was grateful, and I was honored, and I told her that, and I assured her that I would cherish the bedroom set that I use to this day, and that I would always remember her with such fond memories, and I said, and I will think of you every time I'm in my bedroom. Here we are on this holy Thursday, this Monday Thursday, and we hear again the story of Jesus saying those same words to his beloved. Remember me. And I give you something to remember me. Jesus had gathered together with his beloved friends. It was a Thursday night long ago. Jesus sat down and enjoyed a meal with his 12. It was a holiday meal called the Passover. And when the meal was done, but there was still food on the table, Jesus announced that he wanted to leave them something to remember him by. Something that would stick with them and help them say, I remember Jesus and his love. Now the list of belongings that he could have left to them was short. He was a traveling preacher. Everything he had, he had given up to start that ministry three years before Everything he had then, he carried with him. But what he gave them to remember him was himself. Jesus knew what would be happening in the hours and the days ahead. He knew that he would be betrayed, and he told them that as they ate. He knew that others at the table would deny that they even associated with Jesus. And that is not the only time they had disappointed him. Those believers had, those friends, those disciples, had disappointed him many times throughout the ministry. They fought over who got to sit by his right side in heaven one day, and, and they didn't understand what he was teaching them. 
But still, Jesus offered them a gift. Jesus loved them, and he said, I want to give you this so you remember me. Then as he sat around the dinner table, he knew he would be facing death in the days to come. He knew that that would scare them, that they would feel like he had left them. He didn't want them to feel alone. He wanted them to know he was still with them in spirit. He wanted them to have strength to meet the worst in the days to come, even though Jesus knew the best was yet to come. Because Jesus knew that he was dying, he knew that these followers, these friends would struggle because he knew that we struggle when we can't see but are still called to believe. So he wanted to give them something tangible, something that they could touch and even taste, a way for his beloved, us now, to remember Jesus is with us always. Jesus loves us. Jesus gifts us with promises. So Jesus picked up a loaf of bread that was there in the middle of the table, and he said, look at this bread. This bread is my body, and I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to each and every one of you. And every single time you eat this bread, remember me, remember what I've done for you, and know that I'm with you always. Remember, never forget. And then he picked up a glass of wine and he said, see this wine? This wine, it's my blood. I'm going to shed my blood for you to forgive your sins. So every time you drink from this cup of wine, remember me and know that I shed my blood for you so that your sins were forgiven and you will remember me through this meal of this bread and this wine. Just as I am with you in this meal, I will be with you always when you eat it and you will be with me. So Jesus gave this gift, bread, wine, knowing that he was going to sacrifice his body and blood in this meal. And this is the one thing, boy, you first communion students, remember I said the lesson I want you to take home with you, the quiz I gave him every night, was to remember the gifts that Jesus gives to us in communion. The gifts of forgiveness of sins, and the gift of the promise of heaven, life in heaven. Jesus gives himself to us in this meal so that we will trust in those promises, in the forgiveness of sins, the promise of life in heaven, so we will always have something to remember him by, the very presence of Jesus with us. I get to spend three evenings with these First Communion students, 2,000 years ago, on a Thursday night, right before that first Easter Sunday, Jesus had dinner with his friends. We call it the Last Supper, but it was their first communion class, just like I had with you guys. Okay? They had a first communion class, and he taught his students the love of God that comes to us through this gift of Holy Communion. He shared love directly with them then because after the meal, before he went out into the garden to pray, Jesus shared love with them. He washed their feet and he gave them a command. He said, the command I give to you is love one another. Love one another as I have loved you. And that spiritual food, that meal that we're going to have, the bread and the wine, it gives us strength and it nourishes us so that we can love one another as we go out from this place. It reminds us that the love of God fills us up and then flows through us. Remembering, eating, drinking, that's what this night is about. Forgiveness and body and blood and giving thanks and celebrating God's love and being connected to our loved ones who have died before us, who are not just having the appetizers we have, they're having a feast in the heavenly kingdom at the feet of our Savior. We are being strengthened to serve. And these are all some of the experiences we have as we eat this holy meal and obey the words of Jesus who says, do this to remember me. He gives us something to remember him by and more. 
he gives himself to us at this meal. May the hope and the promise of forgiveness and the promise of life eternal strengthen us this day and always. Amen. We're going to sing now. The song is actually printed in your bulletin. It's called First Communion Hymn. It's inside your bulletin. the Lord be with you always. Please take a moment now and greet one another with this peace which comes from our God. The ushers will come forward to receive your offering.
invite you to rise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup, it's the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you, shed for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this to remember me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and know this about communion. All are welcome to commune here, each and every one. We will serve bread, the first communion bread. We also have gluten-free wafers. We will be pouring wine and we have some pre-filled cups with grape juice and if we need to, we can pour more grape juice because both are available. Come when I call you forward. Begin with Dylan Bonsack and his family. Dylan, Dylan, I'm actually going to have you front and center here. And then grab a cup. We're going to have your family around you. Turn around this way. Face me. Right here. Lined up here. Sorry. You're the first family, so you have to set the pace for everyone. Grab a cup.
Lord bless and keep you always. Amen. Lauren Mutchler and Nathan Mutchler and your families.
your grape juice. Trader and Mason Trader.
Warmka and her family.
May the body and blood of our risen Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, this sacred, most holy week, when we see once again how deep your love is for us, how mysterious your love is for us, how enduring your love is for us, help us to follow where you go, help us to stop when you stumble, Help us to listen as you cry. Help us to hurt when you suffer. Help us to bow our heads in sorrow when you die, so that when raised to new life again, we may share your endless glory. Amen. Reading now from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. I cry by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But me, I am a worm. I'm not human. I'm scorned by others. I'm despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. 
Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I'm poured out like water. All my bones, they're out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up. My tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. The company of evildoers, they encircle me. My hands and my feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and they gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves. And for my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O Lord, oh, don't be far away. Oh, help me. Come quickly to my aid. Deliver my sore soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen, you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise, he did not abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat, be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nation shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nation. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him all shall bow down before they go to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to all people, yet unborn, saying that he has done this. Amen.